Hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to discuss uh, the questions that uh, from the subject of public health dentistry which were asked in the recent NEET exam on 16 December. There were a lot of questions and there is a lot of confusion regarding what was asked and how the questions were exactly framed considering the different options that were given. So I would just like to shortlist the questions first. There were two questions from on indices. There were two questions on sampling. There were two questions on fluorides. And a few questions more on bias. Also, there were questions uh, related to IDA. Which I would just write to write because these were not the questions which were asked in the previous exams. And that was the reason why we decided to have this session. So, looking at the questions from indices, the questions from indices were basically, uh, one question was related to wherein it was given about the patient uh, who had met with, uh, who had a few conditions related to the different variety of D, M and F and the DMFT was uh, told to be calculated. Now, this particular question also had a reference of the year in which the modifications of DMFT were given. So, uh, considering the fa fact that uh, all these questions are based on the memory of the students that have uh, commented us or given us the views regarding the question, I am just discussing the gist of DMFT. So, basically DMFT is an index which is to be only for permanent teeth. It is not for deciduous teeth. So, we need to remember this as the first primary thing. The second thing that we need to remember, it was first modif uh, was given in 1938, then again modified in 1987 and 1997. Now in 1938, the criteria that was given for D was the tooth should be decayed. Only 28 teeth to be considered. Third molars are not to be considered. Teeth missing due to caries will be considered as M and the tooth which is restored due to caries would be considered as F. These were the plain simple criteria for DMFT in 1938. In 1987, the modifications which were included were important. They were and they said that all those teeth, all the third molars will be included. That means 32 teeth had to be considered. And the temporary restorations were considered to be D. Also, we need to remember that chalky white lesions or incipient lesions were considered to be normal. So, that was the important modification of 1987. In 1997, the modification that came in was WHO or the CPITN probe has to be used for the checking of the uh, teeth. And the second modification was related to the age and the M component. That is, all the patients who are below 30 years, the missing tooth would be M if it was missing due to caries. And for the patients above 30 years, all the teeth which are missing would be considered as M irrespective of the reason. So, this was the important uh, point. Uh, just a minute, I just missed out on the duster. Uh, this was the important points related to DMFT which were asked. Another important index that was asked was the OHIS. Now OHIS is another important index which is generally used by the students in the college until their final years. Now this OHIS index basically has two components that is the debris index and the calculus index. Uh, so, in the question in the exam, a uh, score of uh, Debris Index was given as 0 0.6 and 0 0.7 and the prognosis of this particular patient was asked. So, OHIS is nothing but DIS plus CIS that is 0.6 plus 0.7 and the answer is 1.3. So, 1.3 in the prognosis criteria comes under fair. So, 0 to 1.2 is good. 1.3 to 1.7 is fair and more than 1.7 is poor. So, this is what the uh, you need to remember. Earlier, uh, questions like these calculations were not given and they were not never asked about the prognosis or basically what I would like to directly say is 
the application of the index was never asked. They were always questions which were knowledge based or only the cognitive part of the brain was assessed and the psychomotor and affective part of the brain was never assessed in the exams before. So these were the two questions related to indices in the uh, exam. The next questions were on uh, sampling. Uh, now sampling is basically one of the most important steps in the research which actually uh, increases the validity of research if done properly. Now this sampling, I would just briefly classify sampling for everyone. Sampling is basically classified as probability sampling and non-probability sampling. Under probability we have simple random, systemic random, stratified random, cluster sampling, multi-phase sampling and multi-stage. And under non-probability there is quota sampling and uh, snowball sampling, purposive sampling and convenient sampling. Questions basically were asked both were from probability sampling. The important question which was on multi-phase sampling where an example related to the school was given that is a population of the school was considered, they were screened, then the children were further classified among different uh, diseases they have. The people, uh, children under caries were further treated, taken in for endodontic treatment and so as the sample that is the entire school was brought down to patients with caries was further brought down to Patients requiring endodontic treatment, this comes under multi-phase sampling. This was one question. Another question was not remembered very clearly, but it was related to the stratified sampling and randomized controlled trials. So these were the two questions related to sampling. Then there were two questions which were related to fluorides. Uh, now fluorides uh, is an important part of preventive dentistry comes both under public health dentistry and pedodontics. This fluoride basically has different components which are administered in different forms to the patients. Uh, one of the important questions on fluoride was the supplementation that we give for fluoride under systemic fluorides. So the supplementation for a 4 year old was asked uh, who lives in an area of 0 0.5 ppm water. Now there is a clear table given in the textbook related to the supplementation. So it is less than 0 0.3 ppm, 0 0.3 to 0 0.6 and more than 6 ppm and 0 to 6 months, 6 months to 3 year, 3 year to 7 year or 3 to 6 year and more than 6 years. Okay, so there is no need of fluoride supplementation for the age group of 0 to 6 months. For this, we still don't need to give anything. And here also nothing 0 0.25. Then here it is nothing 0 0.25 and 0 0.5 milligram. And here it is 0 0.25, 0 0.5 and 1. Milligram of fluoride needs to be supplemented. So in the question, the... Uh, it was a 4 year old child living in 0.5 ppm. So the answer would be 0 0.25 milligrams of extra fluoride in the form of fluoride supplements needs to be given. Another question was asked related to which fluoride compound has a higher caries prevention compared to the others. Uh, the questions which uh, were recalled and the options which were recalled had the options of sodium fluoride, uh, APF and stannous fluoride. Now among these three the stannous fluoride has a higher number of uh, caries prevention but stannous fluoride is something which is not commonly used due to its taste inhibitions that the patient has and low shelf life. So these were the two questions from fluoride. Another question asked was IDA. Now IDA basically has uh, was related to the members, an Australian person who came to India and needs the 
fluoride uh, needs to become an IDA member in India. So such members are called as affiliate members in the Indian Dental Association that we uh, have in India. Uh, so I think uh, the different questions that we were planning to discuss for today, these were the nearly 10 questions. A few more questions in uh, INICT will do conduct in the next session. Thank you very much and do subscribe to our channel Edge Dental PG and follow the different videos. It would help you definitely to prepare for your NEET MDS 2122. Thank you.